Story number one, my last vacation. Let me start this story by saying that I'm an influencer. I won't tell you my name or anything because I don't want anyone to know who I am. I'm not the biggest influencer, but I have gathered a healthy following and it's enough for me to make a living off of. I'm a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, and when I heard about the new show on Amazon being filmed in Auckland, New Zealand, I just had to go. I decided to make a vacation of it. Although I could have afforded it, I decided to try my luck at getting the trip for free. I'd done it before on countless occasions. I messaged a few hotels, using my large follower base and status as an influencer to get them to agree to let me stay at their hotel for free. What I usually do is promise them a lot of publicity on my social media in return. It took a while, but I finally got a hotel to bite. I did a lot of research and it seemed really legit. They were going to pick us up at the airport, take us to the hotel, and they even threw in a free spa treatment. I didn't care that much about the spa thing. I was there to see the sights and maybe try to get close to where they would be filming for the Amazon show. I was all packed and ready to go. I bought my ticket and it was only a few days until I had to leave. I decided last second that I didn't want to go alone. There was this guy. We'd been friends for ages and I started liking him a little more recently. I invited him, saying that I would pay for his ticket and everything. He agreed and I figured I could just explain to the hotel when we got there and they'd be fine with it. I won't bore you with all of the details. Our plane landed and we got our luggage. We were waiting at the pickup point just outside the airport when a car with tinted windows drove past. I sent the hotel a picture of me so their driver would be able to spot me. A man stepped out of the driver's seat just as my friend grabbed my bags and walked towards the car. Now, I didn't think anything of it at the time, but when the driver saw my friend he seemed a little angry. The driver protested. He refused to open the trunk and started yelling at my friend. I tried to explain, but he wasn't having any of it. I even said that I would pay for my friend's hotel room and that they'd only have to pay for me. Nothing I said made any difference. The driver was really angry and I couldn't understand why. Eventually he shouted a whole bunch of curse words at us, got back into the car and drove away. We were shocked as you can imagine. My friend was furious. He took charge instantly and hired us a car. I gave him directions and we drove to the hotel, but when we got there my heart sank to the bottom of my stomach. The hotel was abandoned and it looked like it had been that way for a long time. They had a working website and the people I'd arranged the whole thing with over email seemed so real, but it was all a fake. My friend drove us to a police station right away. Now, you probably already figured this out, but the police had to explain to us that the man who came to pick me up from the airport was working for a human trafficker ring. If I had been alone like he had hoped, then he would have kidnapped me. That's why he was so angry when he saw I had brought my friend. I was so scared that I could barely move. I was so grateful to have my friend with me. He not only took care of everything with the police and finding a new hotel to stay at, but if he hadn't come with me on this vacation, then who knows what would have happened to me after I got into the car at the airport. Story number two, The Lonely Trail. I've lived in Auckland, New Zealand my entire life. It's a great place to live if you're an outdoorsy, adventurous, and active person. One of my favorite hobbies is hiking and sometimes, if the trail was especially long, I'd also dabble in a bit of camping. Now, what I'm about to tell you took place a few years ago and I haven't gone hiking since. The area I live in is pretty quiet. It's safe and we've never really experienced anything bad or out of the ordinary. I'm telling you this so you'll understand my decision to go hiking alone. I know one of the first rules of hiking is to never do it alone. I have terrible anxiety and I'm really shy. That's why I go hiking alone the majority of the time. I woke up early in the morning and packed my things for a long hike. The mountain trail I chose is usually a three day hike if you don't wrap around and head back down halfway through the first day. So I packed some camping gear and decided to make the whole three day trip. I started the hike early. The sun hadn't even started to rise yet, so it was pretty dark. I drove out to the trail and by the time I parked and started my hike, the sun was just peeking over the horizon and the sky was a light shade of blue. The first day of the hike was uneventful. I'm an experienced hiker and I was on a difficult trail. It wasn't surprising that there was no one out there with me. 
I hadn't seen a single soul the entire day. I made it to the first camping grounds along the trail. I started setting up my tent and I made a little fire. It was a warm summer night, so I mostly used the fire to heat up my dinner and put it out straight away. Now, before I tell you what happened, let me quickly explain what it was like out there for me. It was dark, there were thick clouds in the sky, so there was absolutely no light coming in from the stars or moon. I was far out in the mountains, surrounded by thick trees. That means there was no light from nearby towns either. The darkness was so thick that I couldn't see a few feet in front of me. I was sitting inside my tent with my legs hanging out the opening. I was about to turn in for the night when I heard a noise outside. It was a loud crack, like a stick snapping in two. I jumped right up and a chill ran down my spine. It could have been an animal, so I didn't react straight away. I pulled my legs into my tent and zipped the opening closed. For a while, the only sound I could hear was my own heavy breathing. I calmed down after a few minutes. It was silent, and I think that's what made me so afraid. There wasn't any sound at all. Nature usually isn't that quiet. I was used to hearing crickets and owls throughout the night, but as I sat there in my tent, listening intently for any sound at all, there was absolutely nothing. It was as if something had scared the wildlife away. I heard another crack echo out, this time it was louder and closer to my tent. In that moment, I didn't feel like I was alone anymore. Almost as if to confirm my suspicion, I heard footsteps right outside the camping grounds. They crunched down on the leaves and sticks. I clutched my phone in my hand and listened closely. The footsteps came closer. They were walking right towards me. I didn't know what to do or think. No one in their right mind would be hiking this trail at night. No one would just march up to a camping ground and not announce theirself. The footsteps were slow as they approached my tent from the back. I eyed the entrance to my tent. The only thing keeping me safe was a zipper. My body started shaking uncontrollably, and it was all I could do not to cry. The footsteps stopped right outside my tent. Then, there was nothing. He didn't make any sound for what felt like the longest time. I stayed completely still and even held my breath. I could hear him breathing. It was heavy and deep. I listened so closely that I could even tell that the breathing was getting closer and closer. I had my back to him, keeping my eyes at the front of the tent. I expected to see that zipper pull open any time, but he'd have to move to the front of the tent first. He didn't move, and he didn't say anything. All I could hear was that hot and heavy breath right behind me. My eyes widened and all the hair on my body stood on end. I could feel it. I could feel the breath on the back of my neck. Slowly, I turned my head around and I saw him. His big, wide eyes staring directly at me as he pressed his face into the wall of my tent. His nose was only an inch away from mine. His wide grin showed all of his teeth like some hungry animal. I bolted. In a second, I unzipped my tent and shot down the trail. I'd walked that trail so many times, but in the pitch black it was hard to see where I was going. Still, I ran. I don't know how long I ran, but I was thankful I hadn't taken my shoes off for the night yet. I tripped and fell a couple of times, but the adrenaline pumping through my veins didn't let me rest for too long. I guess I eventually realized that I wasn't being followed. It took me all day to hike up to the camping ground, but it only took me half the night to run back down to where I parked my car. I drove straight home. I didn't care about my gear, and I didn't even bother going back for it. I still shudder to think what could have happened if I hadn't bolted down the trail. What would he have done to me? I have so many questions that I'm afraid will never be answered. Anyway, the reason I'm telling you this story is if you're planning on going down the many hiking trails in Auckland, New Zealand, don't go alone. This place isn't as safe as it seems. Story number three, Get Out. There are over 70 ghost towns along the west coast of New Zealand. It's no wonder that I got into exploring ghost towns when I was younger. My father was quite the explorer himself, and he took me along one time. Ever since then I was hooked. I don't believe in ghosts, but I love exploring places that have been abandoned for years. The eerie feeling you get when it's quiet and empty is thrilling. I've made a few friends doing it too. Waida is said to be one of the richest ghost towns along the west coast. 
The town was built when a quartz reef was discovered in 1905, and it quickly became one of the richest towns with a population of around 600 people. There was a church, sports ground, hospital, school, and even a police station. The mine shaft collapsed in 1951, and the town was abandoned almost overnight. Now, no one lives there. I gathered a few of my friends and we drove down the west coast for the day. All we had were some snacks, bottles of water, and our phones to take pictures and videos. We got to the town just before lunchtime and immediately started exploring. I thought that the town's hospital would be the creepiest location, so I suggested that we save it for last. We started exploring the town's school and moved on to the police station, church, and a few of the houses. By the time we got to the town's hospital, it was mid-afternoon and getting a little darker. The hospital itself wasn't that creepy, but I did start to get the feeling that we were being watched. I kept glancing over my shoulder. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm sure everyone's had that feeling where you just know you're being watched. I convinced myself that I just hyped up the eeriness of the hospital and was freaking myself out. We were halfway through exploring the hospital when we got to the morgue. I was taking pictures of my friends posing in front of the metal tables they used to do the autopsies on when the door slammed closed. I nearly jumped out of my skin and dropped my phone. The door to the morgue was made out of thick metal. It was big and heavy. The sound it made when it slammed shut made my ears ring and vibrated the whole room. My friends and I stared at the door for a moment. We were the only ones in the hospital and, like I said, the door was thick and heavy. There's no way the wind could have slammed it shut like that. It would have taken someone really strong to do that. Eventually, one of my friends built up the courage to walk towards the door. He reached out for the handle and turned it. We all breathed a sigh of relief that it wasn't locked or jammed. He struggled to push the door open and stepped out into the hallway. He looked left and right, then turned to us and shrugged his shoulders. There was no one there. He laughed which echoed down the hallways and filled the eerie silence. My shoulders felt a little lighter and I calmed down for a second, but it was only a second. Through his laughter and louder than the sound of the door slamming, a voice screamed. They screamed only two words, get out, and we all took off running. That scream was so loud and carried by the echo that I felt like someone shouted it right into my ear. It was sharp and cold, like an elderly woman crying out into the night. We weren't alone in that hospital, and whoever was there with us was not kind. We made it back to the car and left the town, leaving a dust trail behind us. I still explore ghost towns. I enjoy it so much that nothing could get me to stop, but I'm a little warier now. When I feel like I'm being watched, then I know that I'm not alone. <laughs>